joining us here on uh, Real Agriculture at the Prairie Grains Conference. We're down in Grand Forks, North Dakota with Kelby Kleinsaucer of uh, the Farmers Business Network, FBN. And uh, Kelby, for years, last while we've been hearing a lot of hype about big data and what it could do for farmers. FBN is, is one way of, uh, of turning this data into, uh, into something that's practical from a, from a farmer's perspective. Yeah, it is. Uh, so it takes a lot of different sort of ingredients to make something like this work successfully for the farmer. Uh, first of all, the technology has to be the right technology. Uh, the business model has to be the right model. And, uh, you know, the market has to be right. So we feel like we've got kind of a, uh, all of those things working, uh, working in the right direction right now. So our model is to take massive amounts of harvest, planting, uh, you know, fertility, weather, other sorts of data, uh, and put it in an anonymized data set and use data science to identify patterns and trends from the data that farmers can learn from. So for example, you may have a field that is underperforming and you might want to know why that is the case and what maybe other farmers that have similar soils, similar weather in your region uh, have done to possibly get a better result. Uh, the only way you get to know things like that is if you work with data that has been aggregated. Uh, and farmers, of course, naturally ask the question, well, you know, can other farmers see my data? Of course, the answer is no. Uh, it is anonymized data. So our model is to, our model is to build a uh, farmer-to-farmer network where farmers get together at arm's length uh, anonymously uh, to learn from one another through data. So how do farmers participate? So it's really easy to get started. We have a $500 subscription fee. It's an annual subscription fee. Uh, it will you know, renew each year on an anniversary year. And, uh, and then the second requirement that we have is that every member of our network is a data contributing member. So we don't allow people into the network who are just going there to look at the data from other farmers. Uh, that's just a, it's a, not a very good model. So the idea here is that everybody participates at the same level. And so to get involved, you take whatever farm data that you have, agronomic data, uh, yield data, uh, planting data, and so on, and work with our team, our data operations center, which is a dedicated team of people who process and clean uh, and load the data into your account. And your first interaction with FBN uh, will be through the website. And uh, you know, sometimes it'll be with one of our local reps where we have uh, you know, 17 guys spread throughout the Midwest and all the states that we do business where they can come onto your farm and uh, help you learn how to use the system, uh, walk through maybe some things that you could be doing a little bit differently. Uh, but at the end of the day, really what we're doing here is uh, you know, giving farmers access to an enormous wealth of data as part of their membership. Mm -hmm. So what are some examples of, of decisions that farmers can, uh, can improve their, their, uh, their information on? Or what are some practical yeah. applications that you call yeah. uses? So pro profitability uh, would probably be the one to focus on the most. And that is, you know, there's obviously a, a lot of talk about gross production yield being a really important factor, and of course it is, but more important than that, uh, we think, is sort of, you know, are you getting good value? So you may have a, uh, a hybrid that's yielding a couple hundred bushels, you know, up here in the Red River Valley, maybe more, uh, but it might be $300 a bag. If there's, a, if there's another option out there that you maybe weren't aware of that does almost as well, but is $50 less a bag, uh, you would want to know that. So these sorts of things are the sorts of things that you can learn when you know the ratio of the price to the performance of a, any given hybrid. So that's an example. Um, seeding rate would be another example. So use the data to uh, help understand based upon the hybrid selection that you have, uh, what is the best seeding rate. So a lot of times what ends up happening is the recommended seeding rate ends up being too high. So the farmer plants too much seed and takes a yield penalty. So they paid more for the seed than they needed to, and they took a yield penalty. So just using that information, you know, thousands and thousands of fields, tens of thousands of fields of data, uh, you know, to understand what is actually the best seeding rate for this hybrid under my conditions. So how do you uh, ensure the integrity of the data is, is maintained? Or how do you, say a combine yield monitor is, is out on a farm, how do you account for, account for that in, in making sure this is accurate? Yeah. So we have lots of lines of defense uh, for that and, and a default mentality that if the data 
looks, looks suspect, it's not included. Uh, so we'll take the data still and we'll put it in your account and you know, make it available for you to use, quarantine to your account, but it will never make it into the master data set, say for example, if it appears to be, the values appear to be wildly out of order. So that's kind of number one, defense number one. Uh, we have a data cleaning team uh, whose sole purpose in life is to clean farmer data. Uh, so if you think there's sort of this uh, magic that takes place at FBN with data that's any different than you know, what happens uh, with, with uh, ag data in other cases, there's not. I mean, we, we do have some great scalable, you know, wonderful technology that's doing great things, uh, but at the end of the day, it's a human being that's skilled and understands this stuff and uh, working on the data. But I, th I think in the end, really it comes down to big data. It comes down to the fact that these data sets are so large that at a certain level, and it doesn't take long to get there, but at a certain level, um, you know, perturbations or anomalies in data actually are factored out just by, by the mere fact that the data set is so large, it's impossible to influence the, the averages in it. So do you have, when you get down to a regional basis, do you have enough data in the, in the system to, to get these kind of, uh, this kind of accuracy? Uh, it depends on the region. Uh, this region, yes. So this is a hotbed for us. Uh, this has been a, a, you know, one of those things where we didn't plan on it, but it just happened. So uh, farmers embraced FBN from the very beginning. Uh, farmers in the Red River Valley in North Dakota and uh, Minnesota have embraced the system. They understand very well what it is uh, this is going to do for them. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we've built it up to more than a half million acres just in North Dakota alone. So it's significant, and that's, that's uh, plenty of data to make a lot of really, really interesting analytics. Uh, when it comes to going into markets where maybe we're less mature, so maybe that's a unique crop or it's a unique geography where we have crops that we've, that we've analyzed before, um, then we rely on, uh, you know, we rely on innovators. We rely on farmers who see a vision of, you know, someday in the very near future, based on our growth rate, which is uh, uh, really aggressive, uh, someday having, you know, more farmers in the area uh, and providing a great deal of value and basically helping to start build the network from that level. And uh, in that way, we're not really that much different than many other businesses in that uh, it really requires word of mouth, it requires farmers to refer other farmers, but at the end of the day, all it takes really is to identify, you know, those first few farmers in that area where you're trying to tap into a new market, and uh, you know, they typically will 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 drive the bus. Mm -hmm. So then, continuing on that theme of how FBN compares with other uh, egg data uh, analytic companies and, and people involved in in this arena, how is FBN different from, uh, say, some of the uh, equipment companies or, or other data options out there? Yeah, uh, so you'd have to kind of break that down a little bit, but the big thing I'd say with, you know, comparing it to all of the other systems that, that are software oriented, that work with agronomic data, the, really the big difference is we are a data science company. And we built our data science on a network of farmers. So there are no other companies that have taken this approach of building a network of farmers, with farmers sharing farmers, or far farmers sharing data, uh, and then using data science to, um, you know, to provide value back to the farmer as a result of having that network. So our entire business model is predicated on this network concept, um, and it's all driven by farmers. So that's very different too. We, we don't have affiliations with retail or with manufacturers, you know, equipment companies, uh, we are an independent company, which puts us in a position to be independent and to be unbiased in the information that we're presenting to farmers. So those really, those, those key things there, independence uh, allows us to be um, you know, unbiased when we're showing data on the website about, say, for example, a variety uh, and its performance on your soil, under your weather conditions and so on. Uh, it doesn't matter to us which one shows up at the top of the list. And that, that is also a uniqueness of, uh, of FBN. Mm -hmm. So the final question then, what about uh, Canada? How does Canada fit into FBN's plans? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a natural next step for us to get into Canada because, frankly, we're already analyzing a lot of the crops that are being grown in Canada. So we've got a few steps that we need to go through with our uh, data science team, uh, just the same as we would getting into a new crop. I mean, for example, when we added rice and cotton into our, um, into our product offering, 
you know, we had new things that the product team had to do in order to accommodate some of the uniquenesses of those crops. Canada comes with its own set of uniquenesses, for example, soil data. It, soil data is, comes differently from what it would say in the U.S. So, you know, there's some technical challenge, but there's really no other reason, um, you know, why uh, Canada isn't, you know, isn't uh, already up and running. So we get inquiries from Canada all the time. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for explaining this, Kelby. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.